what I have here is a little snippet of an email, very long email. I just have the little snippet. And this is again why I urge you to get conversations in writing when you're dealing with the insurance company. Yeah. If they're not willing to put it in writing, then write an email back to them saying, based on our last conversation, my understanding is X. Right. Can you confirm or deny that? Right. So that there's some sort of trail. But what if the insurance company wants to impose a limit of liability or a policy limit that isn't called out in your policy? Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Airing of Grievances. My name is Eric Raymer. That's Robert Grieve, and we are always happy that you are here. If this is your first time tuning in, we appreciate it if you would give us the thumbs up. That lets YouTube know that uh, we're doing something right, and they want to share that with other people. Just go ahead and do it now. That's a good idea. Just do it now. Mm -hmm. And while you're doing something, uh, if you haven't clicked the subscribe button yet, and our analytics tell us that more than half of you haven't, it's free, and again, it tells YouTube that this is information that's valuable so that they share it. And then finally, of course, if you want to share it, we appreciate that very, very much. Go to your, your you know, just click the link, go to your Facebook or your Twitter or, or whatever you got, and fire it off and say, hey, take a look at this. All right, Rob, happy Saturday. Happy Saturday to you, my dear friends. Happy Saturday to you. As of today, we have 499 subscribers. One of you is missing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. Thank you for that. It's, it's uh, heartwarming. And keep those comments coming. Yes. And uh, if you're here uh, during the premiere, go ahead and type some comments in there, and we'll be happy to respond. You bet. Thanks for all the support, everybody. Of course. All right, uh, Rob, what's on your mind? Well... Today we're going to tackle something that, uh, I don't know why it hasn't come to me before now, but it has. It's time. Yeah. We're going to talk about hidden limits of coverage or limits of liability. Hidden limits of liability. That sounds very legal. Yeah, well, it, and, and what I'm referring to is that an insurer will impose limits on what they're willing to pay to do something regardless of if it's in the policy or not. It's hard to believe, isn't it? Well, it, it, sounds, um, it sounds like something we should talk about. Yeah, yeah. Be because I didn't know that was uh, possible. It's a thing, and uh, I beg you, stay with us on this, because I, I want to just set up what limits of, of the policy are and give you some examples. Okay. Uh, and then we can get into our particular little story here, yeah. uh, which is, is quite interesting. Stick with us to the end, uh, but let's talk about what we all have uh, as far as our accessible yeah. to our knowledge. And I was just trolling the web. Here's some just examples that I found off the web. Okay. Um, and the first one here talks about uh, the liability limits apply to each insured auto as shown on the policy declarations. So the deck page. Deck page, declarations page. Declarations page, page and that's usually your first page uh, in the policy. Okay. All right. And so uh, I got a little example here from Fake Company. Fake Company. Fake Company. Here is an example of what a declarations page may look like. Okay. Uh, and you see, uh, you know, this is for a, a, a auto policy, so you see car number one and car number two. Sure. Um, and then you see coverages, limits, and deductibles. Yep. So uh, bodily injury, 100, 300, uh, property damage liability, $50,000. That means that if you are involved in an accident, 
and you cause forty thousand dollars worth of damage to the other person's vehicle, you've got coverage up to fifty. Okay. But if you're in a three-car pileup, that's your fault, and it's a hundred thousand dollars, they're only going to pay. The max that they're going to pay yeah. is fifty. Right. Because that's the policy limit. Mm-hmm. So the limits are really, really important uh, to focus on. Of course. Um, and, this and, partic- and let me just interrupt for just yeah. a moment because sometimes, uh, especially if you follow the marketing campaigns, we purchase with the least amount of premium in mind, right? Uh, the, the, the idea or the promise of the 15 money. minutes yeah. and 15% or more yeah. uh, you know, savings when in fact what you're really... You're lowering these things. You're lowering your, your limitations <laughs> of their risk. Uh, All right. Yeah. So we keep going down. Comprehensive. These are your deductibles. Uh, emergency roadside assistance covered, and rental. This particular policy has thirty dollars a day for a nine hundred dollar max. So they're not going to pay more than nine hundred dollars. If it takes three months to get your car fixed, the max they're going to pay is nine hundred dollars. Get a more robust policy at, than that today. At a rate of thirty dollars a day, yeah. you can see how fast. So, that, that so thirty dollars a day is a max, right? And then there's another max of you can have thirty dollars a day up to nine hundred dollars, right? That's it. That's then it. we're done. That is the limits of liability for this particular yeah. policy. Listen to his advice and get the most robust rental car policy add-on that you can it's cheap and many guests have thanked me for having them address that in their policy yeah all right so continuing on here's another example uh protection against loss due uh, loss to an auto the following coverages apply when indicated on the policy declarations page so we go back to the deck page right yep additional payments autos insured Definitions, exclusions, and other information applicable to those coverages appear beginning on page 14. So you have to read what begins on page 14 too because these are imposed additional limits of liability and better understanding, like the rental car. You don't just have $900 of rental, you have $30 a day. So you can't spend $50 a day. Right. And get that covered because they're only going to cover thirty dollars a day. By the way, thirty dollars a day doesn't buy you much these days. No, it does not. Um, so if we go and we go to page fourteen and uh, kind of look at some of the other things, here, here's here's just an example uh, of policy limits that aren't necessarily on the decor- declarations page. And they are maybe some further understanding for you of what is the most they will pay. Okay. So this one is additional payments uh, when we defend an insured person under this part. We will pay up to $50 a day for loss of wages or salary if we ask that person to attend hearings or trials, blah, 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 blah. Well... That doesn't mean you're going to get $50 a day because if you get paid anyway, uh, you haven't lost your wages or salary. Right. So you're not going to get the 50 And if you lose your wages or salary, likely $50 ain't going to touch anywhere near right. what you would normally work in a yeah. day. And then you go down to number three here at the bottom. It says, we will only pay interest on damages not exceeding our limits of liability. There's that phrase again. Another example of this, if you have comprehensive insurance under this policy, uh, they will repay up to $10 a day, but not more than $300 for each loss for the cost of transportation when the entire auto is stolen. So if you're going to Uber or something, they'll give you up to $10 a day for Uber, which is $10 not, a day. not very much. That'll get you uh, <laughs> maybe maybe to the edge of your neighborhood, maybe. But to a max of $300. So there's another limit of liability that you're not going to find on the deck page, per se. It's, it's a better understanding of what the most they'll pay is. Okay. So let's get to our story. Uh, yeah. 
Well, now that you understand that you really need to read your policy, right? Uh, so you understand, and if you have questions, get a hold of your agent and make sure those questions get addressed. Maybe the the policy needs to be tweaked, or there's endorsements that you can get, mm -hmm. or you know, like rental car that that's an endorsement, OEM parts that's an endorsement. Glass. You know, if yeah. it says in here we're we're going to use uh, aftermarket parts, and you don't want aftermarket parts, and you don't want aftermarket parts. Uh, then talk to your agent about an endorsement for OEM parts and then right. now you have another section that says the, the, the original section is still going to say aftermarket parts but then you have an endorsement that says forget about what that says here's something overriding that right. that you paid for extra and, and, and know, they're cheap by the way these things are cheap we know that sometimes uh, you can get those endorsements that are supposed to override but the uh, person who is managing your case may not be aware of that, and so you have to know. Yeah. You know, one of, one of and the not things, all policies uh, that's available. Sure. One of the things that I think is important to mention before we get into our story is that you know you were talking about uh, it says anything extra is covered on page fourteen and beyond. We're talking about a document that is uh, all legal. And it's, it's supposed to be easy to understand, but still... A lot still, of pages. My, mine was 125 pages long. Don't scare people. Yours, <laughs> read the policy. I'm sure yours isn't. <laughs> but but you've got to read the policy. Yeah. You've got to know what's in there. Okay. Yeah. And what's covered and what's not. Right. And, and, and just like the, you know, a limit can be two limits. You know, $30 a day for rental, Up but to, to a max of X amount. Yeah. Uh, so these things are important. But what if the insurance company wants to impose a limit of liability or a policy limit that isn't called out in your policy? Can they do that? Well, we're gonna let's let's talk about this for a second. We had a vehicle here that needed to be towed to the dealer to do calibrations, and it needed to be towed to the dealer to do calibrations because the, the system is unpredictable uh, in the state that it was. Because if it's not calibrated properly, it can f try to force lane changes and uh, apply emergency braking when it's not necessary. It's not safe to drive. Okay. So we, we towed the vehicle to the dealership. Dealership did all the calibrations. I then sent two, two of my employees in our company vehicle to the dealership to retrieve the vehicle. One to drive them and the other one to drive the other vehicle back. Right. Got it. Uh, and so when we sublet something to the dealer, mm -hmm. we're kind of acting like uh, a general contractor that's building your house or repairing something in your house. Sure. That general contractor may have people on his staff that do certain things, right? But they may also call in companies, subcontractors, subcontractors, to uh, do specific parts of it. Right. In this particular case, we're subcontracting these calibrations to the dealer. Yeah, sure. And like contractors, we make a markup on that. So it's whatever it costs plus a little. Okay. All right? And so what I have here is a little snippet of an email, very long email. I just have the little snippet. And this is, again, why I urge you to get conversations in writing when you're dealing with the insurance company. Yeah. If they're not willing to put it in writing, then write an email back to them saying, based on our last conversation, my understanding is X. Right. Can you confirm or deny that? Right. So that there's some sort of trail. Because it, if I didn't have this in writing, it would be a different story. Sure. But here's, here's the situation. The insurance company with the car that we sent to the dealer for calibration yes. uh, has a 
limit of liability or a limit of coverage that I cannot find in the policy. I have an agent for that company, not this person's agent, but another agent reading through the policies for that company and nowhere in that policy and nowhere in that policy and nowhere in, is there any verbiage like this which can create a problem for that insurance company. I would say that could create a very significant problem. So what they wrote is sublet dealership, this is addressing our line on the repair plan for subletting the, the calibrations. Right. Sublet dealership, 25% markup up to $150 allocated. Okay. So, and then the next line down is towing, no markup. Oh. So in other words, they, the insurance company wants to use my money for free. And they want to put a limit on how much money they're willing to pay. And this is just one company. This is not something that we see uh, with a lot of other companies. Yeah. Uh, but there are some other companies that have similar type of uh, exclusions that uh, aren't in the policy. They're not in the policy. No, so, but I mean, you saw how detailed it is, how much they're going to pay you per day if you got to go to court and how much you, rental you have yeah, and all yeah. the rest of that. But if they're going to impose uh, a 25% max markup on sublet to a max of $150, it seems like it ought to be in the policy. But I can't find it in there anyway, and it could be setting up this insurer for a bad faith claim. Wow. You mentioned bad faith. Help our viewers figure out the ramifications if, in fact, bad faith is established. Uh, it's very good for the person suing the insurance company if bad faith is found to be uh, true. Yeah. Damages exceed two or three times the value of the loss yeah. plus attorney's fees. So when you're used to getting a loss and you get this big chunk of money and the attorney takes 30%, well, no, the attorney's getting paid and you're getting paid. Yeah. So, so it's, it's, it's not something that, not a road that anybody wants to go down. It but, you know. sounds to me like, though, that there, there is some person in this case, it sounds like they're involved with the insurance company who has just decided that they're going to impose. Well, you know, maybe they're trying to impose this on everybody. I, I don't know. An equal I, I, opportunity. Yeah, I hidden this is, liability. This is what they're saying in this particular case, and, and uh, I don't know that I've seen this, this kind of verbiage before. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's uh, so. Th th there's actually another section in an additional email that says, "Well, we'll pay the markup of 25% up to $150, or trip time." So when I sent my two people in my company vehicle to go retrieve that car and bring it back and bring my company vehicle back. Call it an hour each. So I had to pay that employee an hour each, uh, and the gas and so on and so forth. But they won't pay for that. So they won't pay markup on the towing. They won't pay uh, for me to send my two people. They'll only pay. 25% of the bill up to $150. So I think there's some some limits issues going on Yeah. that may or may not be called out in the policy. And there's plenty other examples of this type of thing. Yeah. This one just happened to hit my desk and I thought I would bring it to you and, uh, you know, rip the Band-Aid off the wound. I have some experts that I'm in communication with uh, trying to figure out what what exactly does all this mean and how are they able to do that? Right. I mean, they may have internal policies and stuff like that. That, That's cool. 
But if you, the consumer, don't know that by looking at the policy, then how do you know what you're buying? Yeah, how would you know? How, how, how would you know that this guest is going to have to pay? That this is, my bill is bigger than this. Right. So, you know, the guest is going to have to pay the difference, but they're not covered for it because of this limit of liability, That's which isn't in the policy. in the policy. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, all right. So, so we're going to be doing some follow-up on this one. You bet. And the takeaway for you is, uh, first of all, do you know where your policy is? Um, that That's an important thing. It's not it's not detailed on the back of your card. No. <laughs> okay. When, when Rob comes to me and says, do you know where your policy is? And I look at him with a blank stare on my face you know, because I don't know where it is. I don't know how many of these videos we've done. He still doesn't know where it it's is. It's <laughs> time to call and ask. I actually do know where both I'd be shocked are. if he even opened the envelope. I, well, I didn't, I, but I know where it is. <laughs> 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 All right. Rob, thank you for bringing yep. this. Know where your policy is. Then know what the policy contains. And more to the best of your ability. What I mean, it doesn't contain. You, you're not going to know about this because they think the guest wasn't included in this email. Yeah. It was just to us. So they're trying to impose this on us, but it's really getting imposed on their insured. Which could be you. Yep. So buyer beware. And let us help you. And there are companies that don't parse. No, there, there's plenty like of companies. This is, again, it's becoming more and more popular yeah. that these insurance companies have these hidden uh, uh, limits. Let's call them what they are, and because they told you what the limit was, if you if they gotta get you to go to court, right? Why wouldn't you have this limit too if that's what they're gonna impose on you? That's a good question. So, all right, brother. That, thank you. Happy, happy Saturday. Happy Saturday, my dear friends. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have an amazing week. I'll see you next Saturday. <laughs>